Hello and welcome to the Sales Development Revolution video series. In this episode, we're going to focus on conversational marketing and using live chat and chatbots as an SDR. Yeah, this channel is an instant connection to potential customers and really offers a new opportunity for SDRs to capture conversations without the need for contact forms or callbacks. Exactly, AJ. And you know, the data really shows it. PSFK found consumers are four times more likely to prefer using a chatbot over a human. So how can SDR managers tap into this relatively new channel? Grayson, that is a great question. And here to help us understand is Tom Jenkins, who is the Director of Marketing over at CloudTask, a worldwide managed workforce provider for sales and customer success teams. In our conversation with Tom, we discussed the future of chatbots, the concept of a conversational development role, and best practices for SDRs using live chat and chatbots. We do cover a lot, so without further ado, let's begin. So, I mean, this rise of chatbots is it's good timing. Uh, you know, buyers spend a ton of time on research nowadays before connecting with sellers. And when they finally do, you know, that speed in which companies can contact those leads has a huge impact on their overall engagement and the ability for them to win that sale. And so for, for managers, conversational marketing and chat runs, uh, it's presenting a really big opportunity uh, to change how SDRs are getting their job done. And so, you know, in your opinion, Tom, you know, how has conversational marketing changed the way you view the SDR role? Yeah. So I would say rather than kind of change in a massive revolution to the SDR role, it's been another additional tool and so evolved it to make it any channel that you can open up that's going to help you generate qualified leads and qualified appointments is a good channel to look into. The phones are always going to be there. It's still going to be key. There's always going to be email. There's always going to be LinkedIn. And now conversational marketing has come along. It's allowed another platform where SDRs can instantly connect with prospects on websites, can be on your social media. So no longer is a prospect having to fill out a form and wait for a call. And the same is for the SDR. They're not having to wait to generate that appointment. They've got somebody speaking to them on the website, on the social channel, wherever it is. And instantly for the company, for the SDR, they can turn interest into immediate meetings and qualified appointments that that wasn't there in the same way before. So it's a very exciting tool and a lot of people are seeing a lot of success from it. Yeah, that's interesting that you brought up sort of the, I guess the alternative, because a lot of organizations look at it from the buyer's point of view, where it's like, oh, you know, we have this system set up where if someone's interested in our services, they can more readily get in touch with someone on our team. But it goes the same for the SDRs as well. And that's something that I don't think a lot of people really think about because I was an SDR at some point. A lot of people listening to this are probably SDRs or were at some point. And the most frustrating thing is to find someone that you know would be a good fit and then to reach out to them via phone or email and just never hear back. And you know that there's something there. But like with this advent of chatbots or a way to just more effectively and in real time get in touch with someone, you can figure out an answer in an instant versus, you know, waiting for someone to get back to you via email for like a week or however long it might take. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And but for bigger organizations as well, I mean, what we're seeing is actually the SDR role still stays with the call, email and social, mm-hmm. but people are creating new roles in themselves. I think Drift call it a conversational development rep. Yeah. And actually, it's that's all they do. So, yeah, new roles are kind of the brother role of the SDR role as a whole new new position created altogether. To to kind of go into this new role that you're talking about, I mean, um, I assume if they're making a new role, that means that there are some, you know, special skills or maybe some separate traits apart from what you would see with with your average SDR that's coming out in these new conversational SDRs. And so, you know, are there any skills or traits that you know of that are really sticking out for these conversational SDRs? Yeah, so one is, I mean, I'm not 
necessarily sure if, if these are skills, but these are some keys if you are managing chat that you need to be doing, responding really quickly. Even if you don't know the answer, just acknowledging, hey, I'm here to help. Thanks, thanks for messaging us. I'm, I'm just going to find the answer and get back to you. Just get in there quickly. The other ones, it's not like the phone or an email. A chat box is incredibly short, so keeping your messages brief, uh, similar, match and mirror. If they're being super, the prospect is being super direct and to the point, be to the point back with them. If they want to have a how are you chit chat, um, do that as well. Those are a few of the little things. Try and get your grammar right, your punctuation right. And yeah, just don't ask too many questions at once as well. Ideally just one so you don't scare people away. Mm. Yeah, I feel like what you've mentioned, a lot of those sort of tactics to make sure like mirroring and things of that nature are stuff that you teach in the SDR role for more traditional channels as well. Obviously the translation over to um, chatbots makes perfect sense. But do you think that there is maybe an exclusivity when it comes to having an SDR work specifically with this style of, or with this channel versus like a, a traditional channel in terms of training? Um, Cause I know that, like I said, a, a lot of it sort of crosses over, but would you maybe train someone for this role a bit different than you would train them for a more traditional outreach method? I, the, the, the basics, in, in my opinion, the basics still remain the same. You know, you're, you've got to be engaging, providing education and adding value before you reach out for a meeting. I may, the, the, the training that's going to be different, you're going to be focusing a lot more on active reading rather than, you know, going through role plays or on, on the phone call. You're going to be doing your role plays on the chat. You're going to be making sure somebody can write clear, easy to understand messages. Mm. And yeah, you're going to be trying to draft some basic templates that people can always use for specific questions. And yeah, keep it a lot more, just a lot more focused on the written side, really, and active reading and, mm. and yeah. How about, how about you, AJ? Well, I mean, what, what, what more would you add to that? I wouldn't say, so I agree with you. I think that it's funny when you look for an SDR in a more traditional outreach channel, you are looking for someone who can hold a conversation. Um, they're comfortable just talking to people and sort of um, using that traditional method of communication, phone or email in, in sort of um, effectively managing that to, you know, get someone to take a meeting or, or find out information or whatever your end goal might be. But uh, you're right in the sense that like with chatbots, you don't really have that aspect of it. It is a little bit more fast paced, a little bit more um, active reading, like you said. And I would agree that that's not something that a lot of SDRs sort of learn immediately. It's something that sort of you grow with the role in learning that skill. Um, but maybe that's something you look for when you're hiring someone specifically to man the chatbot for an organization. Yeah. You want to have that active reading versus having them learn that over time. Yeah. Active reading and good, clear, concise sentence writing structure. Yeah, tough Those to find these two. days. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I, uh, I go through my spam folder every once in a while just to see what emails kind of trickle in there. And uh, I'll go through them. And every once in a while, something accidentally gets in there that definitely should have made it into my inbox. But then I see ones where like, it just doesn't make any sense. And there's like no paragraphs. It's all like one big message and there's no proper grammar. And I'm like, how are you? How did you think this was a good idea? Who does yeah, something yeah. like this? <laughs> yeah, we all received those emails this year. So that kind of brings me into uh, an interesting conversation I wanted to have because, you know, um, like social selling, you know, conversational marketing is something that's relatively new in, in the hands of SDRs. And so, you know, a big worry that, that a lot of managers uh, might have is the time that they're spending on this new channel and what they're doing with that time. And so uh, have you seen uh, some signs of things that SDR shouldn't spend their time on or maybe some mistakes that they make when they're trying to man that chatbot? The biggest mistake um, companies make when they take on conversational marketing is if people don't, if you're, if you've got a bot, fine, the bot's doing the engagement and qualification and it's instant. But if you're, if you're adopting it and you have it routing straight to one of your team, and nobody's responding, mm. that's the biggest mistake you can make. That's when it's not gonna work because 
you know, we're all busy people. We're just click straight off the screen and probably go to the competitors. So if you are going to adopt this, you need to make sure either A, you have conversational marketing reps in place to, to be able to get on top of every chat and that's their job. Now that probably only comes when you're a, a much bigger company handling thousands of chats a day. Mm. A lot of companies just adopting it are going to have it as part of their standard SDR who's making calls, LinkedIn emails, and this is an additional tool and they need to be getting back quick. So have your notifications turned on, have your pop-ups turned on, so the second the chat comes in and have routing rules as well um, by that, you know, it goes to three different people. So if you're on a call, somebody else jumps in and says, I'm taking this. And then, yeah, you're not going to be wasting time on it because you're only going to be using it when you've got an active, interested person. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the quicker you can disqualify them if they are a time waster, <laughs> obviously better. But yeah, that, that's the same in any, any sales role. Yeah, that is so very true. Like it's just as much of a time waste if you get someone on the phone that's kicking tires or like you're going back and forth with someone who's never really going to purchase your product or your solution or whatever it is that you have. Um, you know, they're going to take up sometimes days, weeks, even months of your time before you figure that out. Whereas like if you're chatting with someone live, you can figure out in 10 seconds whether or not, you know, this is something that you should follow through with or, you know, just forget about it and, and move on to the next one or wait for the next one to come in. So I think the real time aspect of that really kind of just like negates the whole, am I wasting my time with this kind of situation? Because A, you have to wait for them to come in. So you're not really, you're doing your job otherwise until someone chats in. And then when they do chat in, it's such like a small percentage of your day where you're talking to these people live that like, how could you really consider that wasting time? I don't know, some people, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, Yeah, 100%. Do you, yeah. Do you think that I don't know, I guess like the the future of AI when it comes to, like you mentioned the conversational marketing aspect of it and having um, obviously real people at the end of the chats sort of take them when they get qualified by the bot. But like, how sophisticated do you think that these bots are going to end up getting to the point where like, do we need reps on the other end at some point in the future? Are robots taking over, I guess is really just <laughs> of what I'm getting at. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I mean, right now, you know, who knows what, what's going to happen in the future. Maybe Jeff Bezos will design something amazing. But um, until then, no, I do think there's, there's still massive value in, in having the human rep at the end of it. Um, AI is useful. <laughs> Good for our jobs. AI is always going to be useful at kind of engaging initially, qualifying, trying to strike up a conversation. But if I've got a specific question about my company, well, the bot's never going to be able to understand everything about my company and what it does, well, at least at the time being. And you need right. a human rep in there who's going to be able to take the specifics forwards. And what we've even seen is even actually cutting out the bot altogether, people like, some people like bots, some people like humans, and people can just like going straight to a, the human in the first place who can, mm -hmm. who can do the initial work if you have the resources to do and test that in the first place. Right. Yeah, I've seen that. I've man, man chat bots a couple of times, and sometimes they, they are okay with you being automated. You're like, hello, robot. Here's my email. Let me know when you can get <laughs> And others, they they post a phone number anonymously, anonymously, and tell them to call, <laughs> and, and they're done. Yeah, off. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, yeah. It's just always going to be have to be tailored to who your market is, who your profile and persona is. Yeah, I think that's big. Is that like we're in this age of like personalization, and a lot of people sort of dissociate robots or chatbots and personalization. They're on like two totally separate sides of the spectrum, but in order to effectively have any kind of like conversational marketing built out, it still needs to be personalized. You can't yeah. just like assume that because it's a robot, it's going to be impersonal. They're there just to like take your phone number and, and grab your email and push you off to a real person. Like you can really work them to make sure that they represent you, your brand, your company. Uh, that's like super important. Uh, something that I've noticed a lot when I go onto websites, at least that have chatbots, like the more, branded and personal they are, the more likely I am to actually engage with it versus just like, a, hey, can I get your phone number so that someone can call you because you're interested? Like, eh, I'll pass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, that's a good point on personalization, AJ. And uh, one thing that has always been on my mind with this is, you know, how managers and the company itself can can support um, SDRs when they're using the chatbot. Because, you know, yeah, it's always great to have those templates or some note cards or some content to help support their colleague or their emailing efforts. But, you know, what can companies do to help maximize uh, readiness and performance for SDRs when they hop on that chat? Yeah, so again, this comes back to the first point is this is more of an evolution and it's an additional tool that you have for success. So much of it is still going to be the same as training an SDR for calls or emails or whatever. Firstly, making sure they know everything about your product or service to make sure you know there's minimal time wasted in the answers to the point. Showing them and training them on every aspect of the back end of the tool that they're going to be using because you know those though these tools aren't rocket science There's still some clever things you can do like I don't know dropping your instead of confer, Going backwards and forwards confirming a time for a call You can just drop your calendar in make sure they know every aspect of the tool make sure they know every aspect of your product or service and make sure they understand the typical pain points and the typical, you know, what people want from your service, so you're prepared to respond to them. It's always good to have some template responses as well. Just so you know, if somebody asks what are your prices, you can drop it into the chat. But with templates, like anything, you still want to personalize them as much as possible to make sure you're answering the specific question that Mr. or Mrs. X are asking, rather than just oh, this is our answer that I give to everyone. People know when you're copy and pasting. You want to get away from that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like that. I mean, I think the big theme that I'm taking away from what you're saying, and obviously correct me if I'm wrong, but like the way that you're training or, hi or looking to hire reps specifically to, to man conversational marketing is exactly the way that you do it for traditional SDR channels. And, and a lot of the hiring methods on your end and sort of the training after the fact are the same. It's just a matter of um, figuring out who, for an organization that's incredibly large, who will man chatbots and who won't. And for most organizations that don't have thousands of chats coming in, um, how to weave it in throughout your day to effectively sort of do your traditional outreach methods and then to also work the conversational marketing side of things. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly that. It is very similar. You know, there are some little changes. Yes, you know, they've got to be good at writing English. Um, yes, they've got to be familiar with the chat tool and the tech behind it. Yes, you know, you know, you've got to have shorter answers and only answer, asking one, a few little things, but most of the big things are, are the same. Yeah. So if they are all fairly similar how do you see sort of the then next step of the evolution and sort of the track of the SDR within an organization that maybe does man chatbots versus one that doesn't because I know a lot of organizations use the SDR role as sort of a stepping stone to an account executive or some kind of closing rep um, do you think that someone who has experience with conversational marketing might have a leg up as they, they sort of move through organizations or um, maybe into different roles within marketing or sales or, or wherever their sort of career ends up taking them? So that's a good question. And one that yeah, I haven't really thought about until now. <laughs> Throwing some curveballs so, there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good. No, so I would say the yes, um, chat role is, it can be the first step on your SDR journey because, you know, chat's not easy. Like any sales role, it's never going to be easy. But it can be le it's a lot less daunting being on a chat than it is being on a phone call. So one way we've seen people do it is kind of have that as before getting on the phones, your first role um, is to come in, have your training, and then you start with the chat. And then when you become an expert on the chat, maybe then you move up to calling as well. That's one way of doing it. Um, another is, yeah, if, if you're a multi-channel BDR, you're just going to SDR, whatever you call them, you're, it's just going to be an extra bow in your arsenal. And if you get good at the chat, just like you're good on calls and emails, you're going to be generating more meetings and appointments from it. It's going to help you hop up quicker in the organization. And we do have chat can be used incredibly effectively in customer success, customer support. And other options, you do become an expert in the chat channel, and then you 
kind of, if you are a big organization, has success support, maybe you're going to become the person who overlooks the whole chat division of the company. Mm. Yeah, I feel like that's one of those roles that just naturally kind of evolves out of something like this. Like, as we get more used to having um, conversational marketing, just be part of how SDRs are, are working to get appointments and, and get meetings and things of that nature. Like, naturally, we're going to need someone to sort of manage that side of everything. So just another yeah. role that pops up, you know, the, the head conversational marketist at, <laughs> or whatever yeah. you call it <laughs> at a company. That, I'm sure there's already one of those out there <laughs> somewhere. Awesome. Um, so Tom, I, I wanted to ask one, one last question. So you mentioned a lot about how, you know, conversational marketing at the end of the day is really just another addition to the, the big arsenal that the SDRs now have at their disposal to, to get the job done. And so yeah. with that, that uh, for anyone watching who is maybe wanting to add chatbots to an SDR's existing process, you know, do you have any advice uh, for them on you know how they could do it, how they could do it in a way that's not going to affect the performance of other channels while they're getting ramped up? Um, you know, what do you think? Yeah. So firstly, make sure you have somebody technical on on site who can make sure it's. Let's just assume we're talking about your website now. It could be social or whatever else. Has it set up correctly on the website? So if the prospect types into it, it's going to be routed to the right person to respond to the chat. So there's going to be no dead noise when nobody responds. Secondly is have the data in place. Most chat tools, Drift, Intercom, whatever you like, will say how many people have talked to you, on what page, what's the initial message that make it, you, you could, if you're on your pricing page, you're likely going to have a different message to your home page. So what messaging is people, are people engaging in, what aren't they? Look at what's working, what's not. Again, most chat tools have the dashboards that let you see this. And the other things, if you're going to do it, make sure that if, if a person's being rooted in, they respond. That, that's the worst. If you've just got one person who's incredibly busy and you put this on your website and nobody responds, it's never going to work. And so, the last thing's really just, just go for it. Just try it. There's only one way to find out. And in 95% of the cases... I'm sure it'll work every so often. We may have a specific industry, but it's like with anything. You'll probably make some mistakes. You'll probably mess it up at the start. Fine. Look, learn from that and take the good and optimize it. Yeah, that's a pretty solid step-by-step -step way to get your organization started with something like this. I, I think that the, the big takeaway there is just to do it. Because like, if you're thinking about doing it, it's so easy to jump into the space and try it out and see if it works for you or not. And like Tom said, if it works, like, why not? Like it, if it's a different channel, we're adding social selling, we're adding so many different ways for SDRs to get in touch with prospects. Why not conversational marketing? That's exactly. how I would it. Exactly. And you can have it set up in two or three days. Fair enough. It won't be perfect. It takes a lot longer to get it perfect, but yes. you can only do that once you've tried and tested it. So just, just go for it. Awesome. Well, uh, Tom, thank you so much for, for joining us today. And um, where, where can somebody uh, go find more about you or go check you out? Yeah, go on cloudtask.com and speak to either one of our reps or, or our bot through on our conversational marketing platform. Find me on LinkedIn, Tom Jenkins Cloudtask or tjenkins at cloudtask.com. However you want, we're, we're using all, our, all the weapons in our arsenal. <laughs> if you guys weren't using chatbox, that would be the most ironic thing we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're loving it. We're loving it. We're loving all our tools. So we're just trying to get better every day. Well, cool. All right, Tom. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Tom. AJ, Grayson, thanks so much for having me on.